Question number one, he, um, and what we're going to try to do is using the quote above, analyze how Aristotle's idea affects our government in the United States today. And the quote is, he who trusts any man with supreme power gives it to a wild beast, for such his appetite makes him passion influences those in power, even the best of men, but law is reason without desire. So first of all, who's Aristotle? Aristotle was a Greek philosopher. And what's a philosopher? It's somebody who loved wisdom. That, that's basically what um, somebody who a philosopher is. They're thinking about things and, and how things work in the world. And the Greek philosophers had some basic assumptions. First of all, they believe that the universe is put together in an orderly way and governed by laws, which they called natural laws, which was one of your vocab words. And if you sit down and you think about it, you can understand these laws through logic and reason. You could figure them out and why the world works a certain way. Now, the first and most important of these Greek philosophers is a guy by the name of Socrates. He lived in a democracy. And a democracy, remember, is government by the people in the city-state of Athens. And he taught using the Socratic method, which is still used in law schools today, where you would ask your students a question and you continue to ask them a question until they could figure out the answers. And if you didn't understand something as a teacher, you could correct them. One of the most famous students of Plato was, uh, I'm sorry, the students of Socrates was, a boy, was somebody by the name of Plato. <clears throat> and he um, argued for a government of the wisest, not the richest or most powerful. And his quote is, until philosophers are kings or the kings and princes of this world have the spirit and power of philosophy and political greatness and wisdom meet in one, and those commoner natures who pursue either to the exclusion of the other are compelled to stand aside Cities will never have rest from their evils, no, nor the human race. So what he was looking for here in this quote was arguing for a government by the wisest, not the richest or the most powerful. And when you take a look at the quote, he's saying, until philosophers are kings, until lovers of wisdoms are kings, or kings have a love of philosophy or the spirit and power of philosophy, we're always going to have bad government. So we must imbue within our leaders these love of philosophy. Now, the student of Plato, while well, Socrates was the original teacher, and then you have Plato, and then you have Aristotle. Now, Plato, and here is a statue of Plato, he did not wish to be ruled by authoritarian rulers, and he was very famous because he was actually the private tutor of one of the greatest generals of all time, Alexander the Great. And they were trying to include Plato's ideas of making the king uh, be the wisest philosopher. And this is the quote that you're responsible for. He says, He who trusts any man with supreme power gives it to a wild beast, for such his appetite sometimes make him, makes him. Passion influences those in power, even the best of men. But law is reason without desire. So one of the things that I want you guys to think about when you try to answer this question is how this affects our government today. And I'll give you a hint. Um, we have a republic here in the United States. How does our republic prevent from those who are in power to do anything uh, that according to their passion? So I want you guys to think about that, that we do not have supreme power because we have a republic. And how does that work? All right, thank you, and good luck.